all the gringos eat gringos. It's Mark from Gringos R Us, expats with a plan. Woke up this morning and everything was sort of blowing up on YouTube and the web. And it's all about one question. What in the wide, wide world of sports is South Dakota doing to digital nomads and RVers? We're going to give you what I found coming up right after this. Welcome back. So when I got up this morning, my phone had all these messages on it, and half of them were from Gina forwarding other stuff to me going, you've got to look at this. Something's going on in South Dakota. Watched a couple of videos, tried to find out online what exactly is going on, and then went, all right, let's see if we can find out exactly what's going on. So I picked up the phone, and I called our friends at Dakota Post. Figured. They're going to have a skin in this game, and they're going to know what's going on. So I got some good information from them. The first part is, is it's a two-pronged situation. One of them has to do with the city of Box Elder, which is over by Rapid City in the western part of the state, is feeling a little put out about the fact that the people who live there in Box Elder on paper are able to vote and they're influencing what's going on in this town of about 11,000 people. You have a couple thousand RVers or digital nomads, I can see how that could pose a little bit of an issue. The second part is that there was an audit done and this had to do with unemployment insurance. and there are some people who have been doing or putting in for unemployment insurance because they legally live in the state of South Dakota and they work and that is where they work but because they're digital nomads they're not paying into that particular unemployment fund or should I say their employer is not paying into that particular fund and so these two entities have sort of combined and what they're looking at wanting to do is make it so that if we don't live in the state for a period of at least 30 days, then we're not gonna be eligible to vote. Red flags go off all over the place. You can't restrict people's right to vote, at least in the federal elections. And just to give you an idea of what the opposition is doing, apparently for the first time, the mail forwarding businesses in the state of South Dakota have come together as one to fight this. And they have some very valid points. Number one, the states and the counties are collecting revenues from all of us who are there who are not really draining on the revenues, we're just paying into the coffers. Um, according to statistics, there's over 6,000 in Minnehaha County alone, which is where Sioux Falls is, in a population of two, you know, 200,000 people. So that equates to about, you know, one, one third of 1%. So it's not a lot, but it is money that is coming into the county treasury every year that we pay our county taxes. So, there's both sides of it. What we have been informed is that nothing is done yet. This is all still in negotiation. It's supposed to be going in effect July the 1st. But, as I was informed, when they got to the voting part, they were informed that that's quickly going to be shot down because every American has the right to participate in every federal election. So that's going to be a hard one for them to, to push across the goal line. So what does it mean for us? Well, if we're retired, really nothing. Um, because the only part that would affect us would be the voting part. And I really don't see how that's going to have any legs to make it across the finish line. 
because you start messing with people's rights to vote and the people don't take that well. The other side, which would affect Gina, is a little more problematic. I get what the state is trying to say and they have a very valid point. People should not be claiming um, unemployment benefits if they did not technically work in the state. Yes, they're a resident, but they're not getting paid. They being the state of South Dakota, South Dakota is not receiving the funds into their unemployment um, coffers to pay out for these unemployment claims. Now, number one, there isn't a whole lot of unemployment in the state of South Dakota. Right now, the state of South Dakota is sitting at just south of 2% unemployment. So there's not a whole lot of unemployment there in the state to begin with. But I get it. The whole, um, the spirit of the law and what it's intended for is a safety net. And if you're not paying into the safety net, then you shouldn't be part of the safety net. Get that. Why they can't just go, if you cannot show that you have worked for 30 days in the state of South Dakota or resided in the in the state of South Dakota for X period of time, you're ineligible for the benefits. Let's not try and get logical and deal with the politicians at the same time. That tends to just go. So what we're all in and, and what Dakota Post had, has informed me is that as soon as they know something, they're going to be forwarding out um, that information to all of us who are customers means we might have to sign up for another year of Dakota Post. I know that's not going to make Gina happy, but um, with everybody on both sides trying to figure out what this is going to do, um, it may take a while because you have to remember that's a fairly um, large number of these that occur inside the state of South Dakota. So they would not only be hurting themselves, they would also be hurting their constituents. The other part is, is there's a lot of people who have been um, Dakota Post customers for over 20 years and have voted and done this. And so is this gonna be a grandfathered in situation? Is it gonna be something that they're gonna be able to do and say everybody at this point? Um, they don't know. They're still trying to figure out how to implement this. So basically, there's a lot of this that's totally up in the air right now, and I do understand they have sent some letters out. I'm not sure if that is going to be for people who are uh, incorporated or LLCs within the state of South Dakota, but we haven't gotten anything, and she's a digital nomad. Um, so until we know more right now, we're just gonna keep cruising right along until we see something definitive that's gonna make us go, okay, we need to seriously think about plan B. And when we come to that, we will definitely keep you guys all informed. So that's where we're at. We just wanted to answer that question to the best of our ability, which right now is not a whole lot of anything um, definitive. So. That's where we're at. Hope that this has shed some light on what's going on. And from there, we look forward to seeing you next time. Remember, Gringos are us, expats with a plan. We're doing it, you can too. Here's some other videos you might want to watch. Adios.